So now that we know what entropy is, a uh, measurement of disorder, of chaos, how do we calculate S? So we learned about the second law of thermodynamics, that all spontaneous thermodynamically favorable reactions happen when you have an increase in entropy, an increase in disorder in the universe. What about the third law of thermodynamics? That states that a perfect crystal at zero degrees Kelvin has zero entropy. So we basically have to have, like all measurements, some kind of standard, some, something to compare it to, right? Where does entropy start? So if you have a perfect crystal, no imperfections of a particular substance, and that particular substance was at zero Kelvin, which we've never hit absolute zero, right? So it's, it's a theoretical point. And they're saying that if you could have that perfect crystal, no movement of the particles, since you're at absolute zero, that it, we would call that a perfectly ordered thing. So it has no disorder, an S value of zero. Well, all substances, even if it was a perfect crystal, we've never hit zero Kelvin, right? So any temperature, even if it's a hair above absolute zero, you'd have to put some energy into a substance to get it from zero Kelvin to whatever temperature it is at, so the entropy would increase. Therefore, the S value for all substances has to be a positive number. You can't have a negative S value for oxygen, let's say, or for water, or for sodium chloride. If it's for a particular substance, it has to have a positive S value because you can't get more ordered, more structured than that perfect crystal at zero degrees Kelvin. Now that isn't to say that reactions have to have positive S values all the time. Uh, we're just looking at individual substances. All substances have to have a positive S value since the base that it could possibly be, the most organized, structured thing possible, is zero. And then you can't get lower than that, right? Um, when we get into some calculations down the road, be careful with units because a lot of times entropy values are reported with units of joules per mole Kelvin, where H values that we're going to be uh, looping in here in just a second are often reported in kilojoules per mole Kelvin. So uh, be careful when you get to calculation time with your units. So how would we calculate S? So if we looked at this reaction of two moles worth of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole worth of oxygen gas turning into two moles worth of liquid water, and we'd say, do you think that that reaction has a positive S, in other words, more disorder, more chaos, or a negative S, where that reaction is becoming more structured, more ordered. Without any numbers at all, you should be able to make the prediction of whether or not it's becoming more chaotic more or more ordered based on the things that we were talking about on that previous slide when it was asking you to compare a solid at 50 degrees versus 30 degrees, or solids versus liquids versus gases, or mixtures versus pure substances. That slide, right? When we're going from three moles of gas to two moles of liquid, we're becoming more ordered than we were to start. So that would be a negative S value overall. What mathematical equation could you use to find the actual value for the delta S of that reaction, the change in entropy in that reaction? It's just like the delta H of reaction that you guys already know. You do the products minus the reactants. Um, you do the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. And then that N are the moles in your balanced chemical equation. So if we wanted to find the delta S of that reaction, there's a data table there with some S values provided. 
one of the things that they try often to do on the AP exam to try and trick you is to give you data that you don't actually need. So when you look at that reaction, we have two moles of hydrogen gas, one mole of oxygen gas turning into two moles of liquid water, and the data table has a line there for gaseous water. We don't care about that value for this particular reaction. So if we're going to do uh, the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants, we have two moles worth of liquid water. So two times that 69.95 joules per mole Kelvin. That's our only product. Now we're going to subtract from that the sum of our reactants. So we have our two moles worth of hydrogen gas with an S value of 130.7 and one mole of oxygen gas with a value of 205.07. We find the difference between those two and we get a number of negative 326.57. A negative S means that it's becoming more ordered, more structured. If we link that back to the idea of spontaneity, a reaction is going to be thermodynamically favorable spontaneous as long as it increases the entropy of the universe. The equation on the previous slide tells you how to find the, the change in entropy for a particular reaction, also known as the system. But if that law of thermodynamics says that reactions occur if it causes an increase in disorder of the universe, you have to take into account not just the system, but the system and its surroundings. So how do you get the delta S of its surroundings? You take the delta H of the reaction, delta H of the system, same thing. You flip the sign on that delta H of the reaction and divide it by the temperature at which the reaction was taking place. Now, why is the delta H of the reaction, why is the sign flipped? This is so that we could look at the energy change from the viewpoint of the surroundings, not of the system. So when we say that a reaction is exothermic, a negative delta H value, that energy is being released from the reaction and going out to the surroundings. So the reaction loses heat energy, negative H. But that means that the surroundings are gaining that heat energy, so the surroundings would be positive H. Or, if you had an endothermic reaction, positive H, that energy has to be coming from somewhere. So that means that the surroundings are losing heat energy, negative H. So that's why we have to flip that sign. So if you have an exothermic reaction, negative H, that means the entropy of your surroundings is increasing. It's becoming more disordered, those particles surrounding the reaction. If it's an endothermic reaction, positive H, that means the entropy of the surroundings is decreasing. It's becoming more ordered as it puts that energy into your reaction.